Good evening and uh, welcome to Taste of Middle School and what we have going on in the art world here at CCLS. Uh, my name is John Fiala. I've been teaching art at CCLS for 16 years now and I've been uh, very blessed to uh, have some uh, very talented people come through here and uh, it's always been a joy for me to see um, how creative uh, many of these students can be. Um, the things I always like to start out with is uh, just some tips for success in, uh, in the art uh, world here. Um, the first thing always, obviously, is to try your best. Um, I've got a wide variety of uh, comfort zones that I find students in with their art skills. I've got some students that are just remarkable um, and we're able to recreate uh, things just almost perfectly. And then I've got students that are just not that comfortable and they don't, um, they don't like doing art because they don't think it looks very good. As long as they try their best um, and every project that I give is worth 20 points, um, I don't care how weird it might look compared to what it's supposed to or how other people have theirs. Um, uh, students will almost always get an 18, 19, or a 20 on everything that they do if they if they try their best with things. Um, following directions is is uh, very obvious. Uh, just make sure if I tell you to use colored pencil on this that you use colored pencil. Um, but the biggest thing that usually causes the most uh, uh, detriment to an art grade is if they uh, don't turn their projects in on time. Um, the due date on a project will be usually posted in the front of the room, and I'll try to make sure that's up on Educate. Um, so students will know when projects are due. Um, and uh, if they don't get it turned in on time, then uh, it drops one point for every school day that it's not turned in. Um, so if they wait until the next art class, it's going to be um, four points off. So that's 20%. And we do not do a lot of projects each quarter. So if we only do four projects a quarter and one of them is, you know, kind of a lower grade, then that will um, probably lower the, the grade of the quarter. Um, but I've had students that um, are not comfortable with their artistic skills um, at all. Um, and uh, they, uh, they get straight A's just because they follow all three of those, uh, those tips right there. The first project that, I've, uh, that I start out the year with every year is a self-portrait. Um, I take their picture on the first day of school um, and then uh, put that through Photoshop and get uh, some filters going into it. And so it just turns it into just a single black and white um, uh, image, uh, put that into a transparency, put that onto um, a, uh, an overhead projector, shine that up onto a piece of paper, and they trace around uh, the different shapes that, that, uh, that, it, that came up. And they just have to color it in. And sometimes they color it in plain. Sometimes they color it in with some great um, textures and some patterns and so forth. And so I always enjoy seeing what they uh, they do with that. Um, it is due one week after they get done tracing it. Now, I only have four overheads. And so um, each student will have a different due date. Um, and, um, so they will have to just pay attention to what's written on their little, uh, little piece of paper with instructions and their face on it, uh, as far as what their due date is. But I tell them when they get done doing it, this is your due date and, uh, just make sure it gets turned in, uh, by then. And so we have, um, I think, uh, way more than half of the seventh graders are done tracing it. So if you need to talk to your, uh, your child and find out what their due date is or if they've traced it yet, um, just to uh, make sure they're on top of that. Then we'll get into uh, a variety of different things. One of the first things that we'll hit is uh, uh, studying a, the, uh, the famous artist George Brock, uh, who is kind of into cubism with Pablo Picasso. And then we will do uh, the only project that we do um, in fifth or eighth grade using charcoal um, is, uh, uh, is kind of a, a unique thing to do. And the, we'll, uh, uh, after studying George Brock, we will take a look at, uh, some of his cubist drawings that he did usually, usually sometimes of, um, uh, stringed instruments. And so we'll do a cubist drawing with charcoal, uh, based on, um, a violin or a guitar or something like that. 
Uh, we will do what's called a progression drawing. And a progression drawing is where um, you will take an object, uh, draw it, and then alter it in some way, um, and then uh, draw that uh, uh, four times total. So we will do this with a pop can. Um, and it's just always kind of fun to see um, how well they are able to, uh, to draw that. Uh, we will do one clay project this year, and that is going to be a what I call a two-bowl pot in which they'll take two bowls. Hopefully, they'll bring them from home. Um, I'll send out an email when that time is uh, when we need those. Um, and then they will uh, fill in the, uh, the two bowls with some pieces of clay. Uh, sometimes they can get kind of fancy with it, um, with those little swirls or whatever. Um, but then uh, we'll put the, two put the two bowls together get that fired and get it glazed and um and it's just a, it's a neat little thing when uh, when it's all uh, when it's all said and done um then the thing that uh, seventh grade usually dreads the most is this uh, unit that i do on stippling stippling is a form of uh shading and uh you know uh, value changes dark to light uh but it's using tiny uh dots of a uh, of a marker which I just call a stipple pen. It's a very fine tip pen and they're just going to be using tiny little dots. And so we'll do a couple projects based on, on uh, the process of stippling. Uh, we will be doing quite a bit of stuff with watercolor this year. This is um, the only time we really do watercolor in fifth or eighth grade. Uh, we will do a drawing of a, um, of a flower uh, and then they will be doing the watercoloring with it and then going over that with that stipple pen also in which they'll be doing either some stippling or some hatching just to try to darken things up. It's a, kind of a mixed media thing and uh, usually is a, is a, a very neat uh, outcome with that. Um, and then we'll kind of wind up the year uh, by uh, doing our big masterpiece presentation, which is just a... Uh, an art history, uh, kind of a crash course, um, which I will show them a huge amount of um, uh, art movements and some famous artists and some famous paintings. Um, and then uh, I, I show the same presentation pretty much for the four years that they're with me. And then by the time they're out of eighth grade, they really get to know those things well. I and mean, when we go on our class trip to Chicago and we go to the um, Chicago Art Institute and see some of the actual paintings there, they kind of get excited about that. So that's a fun, uh, fun thing. And I have a lot of students that come back and tell me how excited they uh, are that they know some of the stuff that they're talking about in high school because of uh, sitting through this uh, masterpiece presentation so many times. Then after we get done with the presentation, they will actually try to recreate uh, one famous piece um, uh in a different medium each year. Fifth grade was crayons. Last year in sixth grade, they were supposed to do colored pencil, um, but uh, with the way that we had to conclude the year, um, I just kind of left that open for uh, for people to do it in a, a variety of different ways. And I was totally thrilled with how everybody was able to uh, uh, just create a masterpiece in whatever medium they wanted to do. Um, so we didn't do colored pencil last year. This year, Hopefully things will go better and we will uh, do ours in watercolor and hopefully eighth grade we will do uh, acrylic paint. Um, and we'll, before we get into actually doing that, we'll just kind of practice uh, doing uh, watercolor um, by just seeing how colors blend and how watercoloring works uh, by doing uh, the, the watercolor painting of the deer that's in the back of our room. Um, and then they will... Uh, select their famous piece of artwork and then try to recreate that using a grid drawing um, in uh, then do it in watercolor. It's um, always kind of a fun thing to see what people uh, can do with that. Um, examples of these projects and a lot of other things can be found on my website, which is just my name, johnfiala.com. Uh, grades on the assignment due date should be found on Educate. And then um, if you do have any questions on anything or any concerns, please shoot me an email um, and I will happily try to get those questions answered. So um, thank you for your time and uh, God's blessings on the rest of your day.